Hey, what's up, guys? You got your boy, Andre here. Welcome to our video. So, this is gonna be the concept games for my mid range dirt. Now, thankfully, I was able to play versus a, a wider range of uh, objects this time. Now, I know I, I didn't see like anyone complain about it, but I definitely know that like it looked probably a little bit strange that like for like my last deck showcase for mid range blood that I only ended up playing versus like swords somehow. I just, I just, I, I just only queued into the sword. But thankfully, I, I queued into the four different, well, sorry, three different classes. No, four, four different classes. So. You guys can see a little bit of everything. So let's go ahead and start off with the first game. I'll probably go ahead and show you guys at least four or five of these games. So the first one is versus blood. Now versus blood, I will just go ahead and assume that's aggro. Uh, especially if the person's higher up on ladder. Like for example, if you have like 20,000 points, I'm going to assume you're aggro. Like I'm not going to assume you're control. Now, thankfully, your game plan versus aggro and control, like, it stays basically the same. Like, like you, like you still want to just, you know, control the board and just, like, burn them out. So he has the Ambling Wrath, or sorry, Ambling Wraith on one. That's fine. It's annoying, but that's fine. I have, I have my two, three, four turn, uh, turns set up, so this is nice. Now, unfortunately, none of these are wards. I'm going to take a lot of damage. However, he does miss his 2-drop and, ha and has to Razor Claw me in the face. Now, that's very, very good for me because it, it, means, that, it means that he's essentially just like forfeited, completely just like forfeited his advantage of going first. Now, he's going to be the defender. I'm going to be the aggressor. So, he plays with the Baphomet. That's fine. I don't care. It, it, the Baphomet's only relevant if he, if he picks up another Ambling Wrath or say a... Or say another like blood one drop that's fine here i'll go ahead and play out the dwarf hawk miss so i made the trade that i made because this one it plays around night horde the best so it makes it so that even if he goes night horde i can still clear up most of the board if he goes angel thward that's fine if anything the angel thward is actually better for me he, he curves out he goes goblin that's fine i'm at 12 so this is scary but i can deal with this so I'll go ahead and I'll just go Halo Golem. I'll go ahead and clear out the 2 2. I'll draw a card. And now I get to evolve and full clear his board. Now to be honest with you, if you're if you're afraid of him having like a 3 PP removal, or sorry, a 3 damage removal, you go ahead and you, and you can suicide your 2 2. But I choose to I choose to keep the wider board because that's better for me. Yep, because here he plays out Vanya. Into Urias. So this is actually good. This is actually great for me because, like, he again beca be because of him missing his two drop, he's essentially lost board. But uh, uh, like, um, he, he just cannot ever get board back. And uh, and right now, like, my deck is almost at the is almost at that point where like he comes online and it does all the gross things it needs to do. So here I'll go ahead and play out Carl. The nice thing about Carl versus Urias is that Carl immediately heals the damage you take from Urias, which is kind of funny and trolly at the same time. I'll go, ahead, I'll, I'll go ahead and again, I'll full clear the board. So this is nice because I have not one but two creatures in play. Having two creatures into play going to Blood's turn six is very, very nice because it, it makes their it makes their Carabos a little bit weaker. Yep. So we'll go ahead and play it out. He doesn't evolve out of fear of out of out of fear of, of, of presumably Master Mage Levi. And that's great for me. Like, I mean, like, it's still good for him too, because like, it was gonna, get, it was gonna get cleared either way. But here, I'll just kind of bump in. I'll play, I'll play Professor of Taboos. Taboos will go up. I'll get a token. So now I'm threatening Lethal. He, he needs to clear all. He needs to clear this entire board, or he dies. See, that's impossible for his deck. So, yep. So we'll get no evolve here. The evolve doesn't mean anything, because like, there's still, I, I still have. 7 damage in play, so that's not good for him. Yep, we'll play the Blood Wolf. Him playing the Blood Wolf seals the deal because it now pushes them into range. Take 1 damage. And boom. I go ahead and I just kill him with the... Uh, with Master Mage. So to be honest with you, right here, I actually did this in the, in the incorrect order. The correct way to do this actually is to evolve, hit face, and then, and then play the Master Mage, so this way you don't get stuck here for an additional 30 seconds while, while Professor of Taboos is resolving this effect, since, since Professor is a mandatory trigger. Yep, I'll go ahead and kill him. So again, like, the big thing about, about this game is literally just that, like, my, my, my opponent missed his, um, 
miss this creature to drop and I had to use I had to use a removal spell instead. Well, I had to use a removal slash face spell instead. When he could just like ha we could just like you know have that for later. Um that did actually make a big difference because like whatever that creature two drop was, it could have potentially uh squeezed in a maybe maybe two to three, maybe even four damage, and that would have been a big deal. So on to the next game. This game's gonna be versus Runecraft. So for me personally, when I see Runecraft, be it on ladder or, or like in on rank, I, for me personally, like I, ju I just go ahead and I just assume it's dirt. However, I'm always incorrect in assuming it's dirt and it's always D shipped unless I just like you know assume it's D shipped and that's dirt, which I know see, which is pretty anecdotal, but uh, it was just kind of funny. So my hand is decent, so it's not the best, but it's decent. He plays with the cauldron. The cauldron does. The cauldron does confirm to me that he's dirt. He could be like dirt D ship with like with like heavier with a heavier like dirt emphasis, but most likely he, he's 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 just dirt. Yep. He plays with the illusion saw two. The illusion saw two final, does like hundred percent confirm it without a doubt. I'll go ahead and play out the dwarf alchemist. The dwarf alchemist is nice to, to just you know contest. He plays on Carl. So now I know his um. His illusionist is just firmly entrenched because I can't. I, I need to have three removal spells to kill it. I do pick up the red hot ritual. So now, we'll, so now we'll get. We'll go ahead and do heroes. We'll go ahead and, and make a very, very risky gamble. So I make this gamble because, like, uh, the last I don't know, like, like five or six like uh, dirt rune games that I've like played or whatever. Anytime that I've like made this particular board, they always go piercing rune on my um on my two two and they just like go face with everything else so that's that's what i'm hoping that he does if he does that i have i have the double removal spell here plus the attacker so that's three so that's, so that's the so that's the prerequisite three and i need to go ahead and remove his board if he uses halo golem that's even better well that's probably not as good because he, he might trade them but so basically what, what i need to do is I, I just need to dodge halo golem or i need to hope that he's dumb and if he does have the halo golem he just like tosses everything face but nope has the piercing room like okay cool got him so this means that my Carl does stick. Carl sticking is actually insane because it means that, he, that he's already he's already healed me for one. He'll heal, he'll heal me for two as well here. I'll go ahead and I'll evolve my Dwarf Alchemist. The Dwarf Alchemist search is kind of relevant because like there are some there are certain cards I I want to find like for example I, I want to find more Master Mages I want to find um, Professor of Taboos. I don't find it, but I do pick up the Junos. The Junos is decent, but you usually don't want it in this matchup because you don't want to get yourself board blocked. I'll go ahead and clear off the board. Now he still has the Carl in play, but he just used a piercing, so I'm not expecting him to have a second one, but if he does, you know, you got me. So he will evolve here, so I know that I'm, I'm probably getting myself piercing here. Yep. <laughs> so now I'm at eight. This is a very, very scary life total, because like, my deck doesn't go that fast, but thankfully I, I get a miraculous better than Alchemist top deck. This is this is why you play better than Alchemist. Look at that! Like, uh, I I just completely like un undid undid his entire turn five. Like, I I, I only basically took one damage from that because he did six damage to me at that turn. So I'll go ahead and I'll make the trade and I'll evolve. I, I now pick up my professor. The professor is good here because he because there's a strong chance he might master mage me, and professor and professor counters master mage very very nicely here. Instead, he drops a mutable on me, and I'm like, uh, okay, all right, that's not the play, but all right. So now I pick up the Master Mage, and now I'm just gonna turn up the heat on him. Literally, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and I'll evolve here. Now I make the evolve because I don't think he's playing. I don't think he's playing. Um, he's playing Professor Protebius himself. If he is, you know, you got me. But there's a strong case he's not. I, I want to get aggressive because, like, I, I need to end this game quickly. He plays on Oz, grab, gets a Witch's Cauldron. And in a second mutable, I'm like, okay, that's fine, because I, because now I have us, yeah, because now I have the professor, and the prof the professor is about to go in. So I go, I just go ahead and drop down the professor. I go face for two. Yep, and turn the the wizards will die due to, due to the professor's effect. I'll get a zombie. So now I'm threatening lethal again. He needs to remove oh, several creatures from this board in, in order to be fine. But that's very very difficult for him to do. Even if he does do it, he's actually still behind on, on HP. So he plays a, a second Oz. Is only allowed to play two spells, so he can't actually kill me from this range. 
but he passes, and so, yep, he's just dead. Yeah, so this is, like, a, a pretty, like, cra uh, crazy game overall. I'm only able to take it just because, like, I was able to find all, uh, three of the, uh, three of, like, your power six drops in, in this matchup. Now, granted, he found double Oz, but his double Oz did not pick him up spells, so that's, uh, unfortunate for him. For, for him. Alright. The next thing I'm going to show you is going to be another Stormcraft game, and I'll go ahead and show you guys one of the Runecraft games, and I'll be like it for the video, just so that way it doesn't go on too, for like too long. Right, so this game's going to be for Stormcraft. So Swordcraft as a whole, like like all of their archetypes, just have like a very very terrible time resistor. Just because the combination of like Professor, Halo Golem, uh, Magic Illusionist, uh, Master Mage Levi, all of those give him a bad time. So I'll so I keep so I kept the hand that I did because there's a there was a chance that he might have been aggro, and I don't mind missing a two drop if it means I can go Carl into Veteran Alchemist. I pick up the Levi, but Levi's not really the two drop I wanted. But that's fine. He plays at Lux, so I now know he's mid-range, that's fine. He's either mid-range or control, that's fine. I'll go ahead and play at Stella here. Stella will grab me Star Phoenix, Star Phoenix is good here. However, he plays at a Tempo Mars, so yeah, I, I see people go, uh, go for like the Tempo Mars play all the time. I, I don't understand it, I really don't like it either. Here, I'll go ahead and play on a Carl. So because I picked up the Runic Guardian, next turn I'll probably just go ahead and evolve Runic Guardian. That'll be like my play for the turn. Here, he plays like Kahulin. I'm like, oh, okay. Yep. All right, that's fine. So now what I'll go ahead and do is again, I'll go ahead and, is I'll go ahead and play, play the uh, telescope. I, play, I, I, play, I go ahead and play out the telescope so this way I can go ahead and dig through my deck a little bit. I don't, I don't really need the healing of this matchup. Just because I know he's like midrange and he's not gonna be able to kill me anytime soon. Like the only thing that midrange does is, is they just like make like really really impressive boards. They just kind of like nuke and and then they're just like sad. So now I have a five four. The five four will kill anything he evolves into it. However, he goes unsheath blade. I'm like uh okay <laughs> into a Leonidas. I'm like uh <laughs> all right. So now this turn, uh, I'm in a little bit of a pickle because like you, I don't really want to tempo, I don't really want to play anything, but I'm still, but I still kind of have to play, uh, but I still kind of have to play something just because like I don't have any socials going for me and this is kind of awkward. Here he plays out of Gawain and now this part is weird because like he's about to concede but I'm not sure why, like, because like to be honest with you, he actually had me in a very, very terrifying spot because like I'm not, I'm not playing petrifications in this list, like. Uh, it's actually kind of funny because like a lot a lot of my rune lists they always have petrification. Yep, nope, not this one. And that was about to be the one time where uh, where I was actually going to matter. So on to the last game. So this game is actually versus a friend of mine, Shiruka. So I decided um to go ahead and like help them like practice or whatever in a scrim. Now the reason why, the reason why I decided to show this game is because this game was absolutely just terrifying. Yeah, like they play a lot of Stormhaven, so yeah, it, 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 it's just really crazy. Like I don't play I don't play versus Stormhaven that often. Well, I don't play versus Stormhaven like with this deck that often. Uh, so so it's definitely you know um, really 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 interesting information for me. So, has Penny and Prayer on one. That's good. Now, I, I missed my one drop. I missed my one drop sigil, so I can't actually go for the Runic Guardian on curve. Has the two drop. I, I, pick, I pick my one drop now, so I'm sad. I'll go ahead and play out the Dwarf on curves anyway, because like I, I want to be able to trade if they if they go for a White Tiger. Instead, they have the Hollow Dog Mom. Like, oh no! So they make the trade here. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure. If, I don't think I would have made the trade here, just because like I, I I'd rather just get my four damage immediately and just try to end the game that way. But like, 
if I guess getting your four damage later is like fine, but I, I definitely think I, I, that would I would just like prefer going wide, which only gets punished by wards. But, but you might, but like I might not have the ward. But I not, yeah, but I might not have the ward. So yep, it goes space for four. Like the reason, yes. So, so as you can see here, like the reason why I did, the reason why I don't like that is because like now, if I have Levi here, you you you, you lose your board. That's not good for you. Here I go ahead and play out the Runic Guardian. So yeah, like I I had I had to dig for the Levi because like Levi was gonna be one of the, one of the few things I would go ahead and, like and help me like recover back on board. I do manage to pick it up, so that's nice. I'll go ahead and evolve into the Tiger here. You always evolve into the Tiger just because it has more as more as higher base HP. Here they have mine you into Star Torrent. Like ah, uh, oh no. Yep, because now they just trade and now they evolve. And now, now they have a 6-5 that I can't kill. Cause like, like I need to kill both that and the mine you in the same turn, but I can't. So now the one that I don't kill is going to just evolve into my face and just be sad. I'm gonna play out another Star Seers here. I pick up the Halo Golem. The Halo Golem was nice, but like unfortunately mine you can't be targeted. So I'll, I'll go ahead and I'll play out the Stella. I play out the Stella in the hopes that like maybe, maybe uh they get baited and, and, and they like decide to trade for me. But I don't think that'll happen because like I'm at effectively 4 HP right now, so uh, I'm in the danger zone. I pick up Scorpius. Scorpius is not what I wanted. Like, <laughs> I don't have HP to play Scorpius, please. <laughs> Thankfully though, they play out either, they go ahead and they evolve. Now, to be honest with you, I definitely think I, I, I would have just yeah I, I definitely would have just evolved here and just said fuck it like it, like if you, if you get the if you get another card off of the off of the cell that's fine. But here I pick a professor now. Unfortunately, because because the cleric lancer has so much HP, I can't actually evolve the cleric lancer. So I'll have to go ahead and just temper this out and just pray 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 that they don't have two damage. Please don't have two damage. They don't. Instead, they have the mind you. And now here, they make a very interesting play. Like, to be honest with you, I, I, I would not have traded here. Nope, I, I would have just gone face. Because, like, I have to be able to remove everything, which might not happen. Like, as, as weird as it sounds out, that might not happen. Um, but instead, because they made the trade, I'm now able to remove everything. So so now, they're just like, they're in a very, very rough spot. But they have to be able to top deck me in order to win. Now, they just used a, an Aether. So I know that I don't. So I know that I probably don't have to worry about a second either for a horse coming down. It has to be exactly horse that kills me now, or now it could just be the the impending uh <laughs> the impending regal falcon that's coming out. But unfortunately for them, I top deck Carl. So this is nice. So Carl will heal me for the one HP. The one HP is so relevant here because like it's Stormhaven. Stormhaven has to have like very very specific things to hit you for one to hit you for one damage in order to kill you. So now, so now I'll get to go ahead and go face finally and start start trying to like you know close up the clock. I'm, I'm getting close, but it's it's gonna be a while. Again, here they make a trade. To be honest with you, I again I, I would not trade her. I would just keep going face. Cause now I just go ahead and I, I try I make I make the full trades. Like I would have gone face her, cause like the the only thing I'll punch you is, is like say master mage, and like for me to have master mage, I have to have master mage plus the sigil in my hand. But uh, but yeah, now, now I go ahead and I play out Scorpius. I play out Scorpius as a just in case, cause there's a chance that, that they make something that I have to trade into. But ideally, I do not want to ever have to make a trade with the Scorpius. So they play out tea time here. They go ahead and use Dogma on the tea time to so unfortunately top top deck the bird song. Here I go ahead and play out the Halo Golem again. I'll go ahead and play out the Halo Golem. I'll go ahead and and I will not trade with with the with the Scorpius because because right because right now like three HP like is, is where I need to stay out of like so this way it, it lets me it lets me dodge the most possible things. Again, I will not attack the Scorpius either because I have the Gilgamesh and the Gilgamesh is starting lethal. So now thankfully they weren't they weren't able to close it out and I'm able to kill them. Uh, the big thing about that game was that like. They should have just ignored the Stella, and they should have just like evolved the mind you and gone face, because it requires me to like win a 50-50 in order to, in order to kill the Stella, and that's like a, or sorry, it, it, it requires it requires me to win a 50-50 in order to kill off the, in order to kill off the mind you, and if I fail the 50-50, I just lose on the spot. Like you definitely want to like play it out as like an aggressive deck, but yeah, like these are all the games. 
uh, I can definitely, you know, do more games if, if, uh, if people want to see them. But these games, uh, were, were pretty funny overall. Like, I, I definitely enjoyed them. Like, so far, like, I'm, I believe, 15 and 5 with the deck? Something like that? No, no, no. Uh, 15 and 2 currently, I'm sorry. Yeah, 50, 15 and 2 with the deck currently. It, it's been, it's been working pretty well. Um... I don't think I would like change that much. Like, I, I, like again, as I mentioned in the in, in the intro to building for it, I would probably only just you know take out the Loki and just like put in like a Runa Guardian or something like that, and they'll probably like make it way better. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, go and leave a like or hit subscribe. And if you haven't, let me know what you think about Mid Dirt down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Okay.